guys welcome to expertizer academy today we're going to get into a, a playlist for autocad so this is all autocad fundamentals training so let's get started so in this one i'm just going to quickly run through the interface and uh, the ddbg file how to save it open it and different components of it okay so autocad is a is a drafting tool so if you are doing a lot of 2d drafting 3d modeling and uh, without parametrics or without intelligence to the model so if you're doing some uh, some drafting and design work then autocad is a great tool to get started and uh, if you are uh, using it for educational purposes then autocad gives you license i think for a year or two free and uh, so you can use it and also you could get cheaper licenses if you're working for a university or something like that and uh, apart from that if you're a developer autocad offers you to option to develop on top of um, the platform so the different ways that you can use one is you can use auto lisp uh, auto lisp is a proprietary language uh, for autocad to write some scripts on top of it and then the second option would be dotnet so we'll be using object arx um uh, libraries and plugins and pretty much that they actually give you the uh, .NET um uh, APIs and uh, you can create .NET based plugins so i will actually go through some of the um, autocad based uh, plugins on a separate playlist uh, that you can watch and um, another main thing is um, uh, with this interface uh, autocad interface you know there are other products which competes in the same segment such as microstation and uh, delta cad z cad lot of other companies uh, garment cad lot of the other companies uh, compete in the same segment and autocad is sort of the pricey portion autocad is sort of pricier compared to the other guys uh, but it offers some sort of a, a niche features and also when you learn one product and then if you go to civil 3d for example uh, let's say uh, the one which i got here uh, on the other screen this is actually civil 3d so if you see the interface of this one is quite similar compared to autocad so if you learn autocad if you want to jump into civil 3d or uh, map 3d or any of the other autodesk based applications so a lot of the logics of how it works is, is similar so the way you move things where you pan move in zoom in zoom out a lot of these things are similar so it's a it's a pretty much autocad uh, has got a lot of other vertical products which is built on top of them so it works in a similar fashion so whatever the knowledge you gain here it will be really useful on the other products so that's one advantage i think this is the same thing with the other uh, bentley products as well so if you learn the micro state and then if you go to uh, open roads any of the other Bentley products you you will get to learn you get to know that some of the tricks that you you learned there is going to be useful on the other products as well so let's get into the interface the interface of this application uh, this is the modern interface the first one is the on the top left corner is your application menu so this application menu uh, is where you you go and open a file new file save save as import export you do all this kind of stuff and uh, so this one has got few little things here so first is on the right panel you got an option which shows you recent documents you can order it and then you can change the view from simple small icons to large view large icons to small images to large images so the images don't render every time sometimes if you save it and then uh, it doesn't render straight away or if it if it's after a few days or something like that it doesn't end out or if you move the location and things like that this is not going to be useful um so uh, another thing is uh, when you have the recently opened files you can pin some of those drawings here so when you pin them um these drawings tend to stick around so if you move the file uh, then you know obviously this link is not going to work so this is this will not work as long as you're not moving it then the files will stick right up here so it will not get removed automatically so rest of the files which is not uh, pinned when you open newer files these older ones will get away so that's uh, this one and then you can go to autocad options from here or the keyboard shortcut to go to autocad options is you can type in options or op and then it takes you to the autocad options so that's one thing and then another important thing is um, this application menu when you double click on this application menu twice it will close autocad so let me show you that so let me draw a line so now if I try to close AutoCAD right from here, see it shows a prompt saying that you have some unsaved changes. Do you want to save this DDBG file? I can click on cancel and then, you know, it goes away and you still stick to AutoCAD. So that means, you know, it tries to close AutoCAD. That's what this button is for. So now if I double click on this application menu, as you can see, it shows the same prompt. So double clicking on this one will also close AutoCAD. 
So the reason I tell this on my classes is like sometimes you might be working on a heavy drawing and it takes a while for you to load everything up and you've been working on. So you would have saved it. That should be all good. But if you double click on this one, it generally closes AutoCAD. So, you know, you have to spend another few minutes to open it again. So people tend to forget that that's actually a feature. And uh, sometimes people tend to get annoyed. They think that the AutoCAD has crashed on them. All right. So that's one thing. And then uh, right next to it, uh, we got the quick access toolbar. So this one is similar to your uh, Office, Word, Excel, anything that you open. So let's say if I open my Excel and this exactly the interface, what you see in AutoCAD is sort of similar. As you can see, um, we got the ribbons here. So that is the ribbons that you see here. And then you see the quick access toolbar on the top left corner. And then on the right side, we got this info space. That's the same thing that we have here. And then in the footer, you see the status bar. So that's the same status bar you see in AutoCAD as well. And um, so this is pretty similar to any latest application that you open. Um, so the way the ribbons work is you got a um, few different components in it. So one is a tab, so which lets you switch between these uh, tabs as groups of all the tools. And uh, second thing is within the tabs, you see the separators here. So these ones, these block of tools are called panels where you can drag and drop these panels anywhere you want it. So this is a whole bunch of tools that you can move. And then the tools itself has got drop downs. So where you can get to see some, you know, extra tools under that. And uh, then the panels have got drop downs. They show you they have generally have some hidden tools in there. So um, that's some of those little things. And then if you go into some of these tabs, you see these little arrows pointing towards the lower right corner. So this takes you to this panel settings. So let's say if I go to annotations and then this is your uh, textiles and then if I click on this one it takes you to my textiles dialog box so people might be wondering how do I get there so right now when you're looking at this one you don't know how to get into that screen so unless and until you notice this little arrow so this is the one which takes you to the textiles all right so now this is your tabs groups tools and all that that's all good so it's still this is still uh, the CUI AutoCAD customized user interface so if you go into CUI command and then you can still customize your AutoCAD workspace. We'll have a separate tutorial on this one. So to go through all these ones, it's a really funky one. This has been in place for the last 15 years or something. So 15, 20 years or something, it's been there as long as AutoCAD exists. So you can still customize your ribbon using the CUI. And then uh, we got the model space. So there is two types of spaces within AutoCAD. So one is a model space and uh, another one is your layout. <coughs> So the layout is for printing and the model space is for drawing. <coughs> so the model space um, comes with a canvas that you can draw whatever you want to draw with. Let's say if I want to draw a rectangle, I want to draw a circle and um, if you want to draw a pentagon, whatever you want to draw. So this is your space. You, you go and draw it. And then when you want to print it, you can still print from model space, but typically people print it from a layout. So you can put a title block around here and then you can you can pretty much create multiple viewports focusing on different sections of your drawings. And then you can print it to a paper, A1 sheet, A3 sheet, A3 sheet and things like that. Printing also will do it in a separate chapter. So this is basically the difference. Uh, spaces that you have one is a model space another one is a layout or you can call the layout as a paper space as well so that's a colloquial term all right <clears throat> then this little uh, thing that you see xy that's your UCS that's user coordinate systems so this one if you try to rotate your AutoCAD and uh, you can see that you can see the Z value as well uh, or if you use the view cube And then if you turn on the view cube, let me go and turn on the view cube and show it. 3D modeling and then. OK, so this is your view cube as well. You can use a view cube to rotate it as well. And uh, so when you click on home, it just gets back to the original screen. OK, so that's the home screen. And then you see this view cube, you can use it to rotate uh, however you want it. Or if you can use this one to rotate into a particular direction as well. OK, and then if you want to get back to the original settings, uh, you can click on top and then it gets back to the top view. OK, so that's one way. Another way is, let's say if you go um, into any of these views, um, you get to see 
um, the model as such. So now you can rotate zoom, etc., everything like a regular model space. So now let's quickly run through the navigation. So the navigation part of it, uh, you use your mouse, the middle mouse button, and then you use your pan. So when you hold down your middle mouse button, you can pan the drawing. You can scroll in and scroll out. That's for the zooming function, zoom in and zoom out. And uh, then you can also use your uh, shift key, ho uh, shift key and the middle mouse button to rotate. So that's the shift key. You are holding down the shift key and then you're using a middle mouse button, uh, holding down the middle mouse button to rotate it. So that's one. And then um, so you can use your control key and the middle mouse button to uh, this is sort of like a scroll view. So you can scroll and you can pretty much it's a different little different from the pan view. The problem with the pan view is you need to hold it and then you move your mouse. So the problem is if your canvas is too big and then you have to keep doing that. So that is going to be pretty annoying. So what you can do is you can hold down your uh, control key and then use your middle mouse button. And then if you do that, the drawing automatically scrolls. So you don't have to manually scroll it. OK, so that's one little trick. And um, so then uh, we got this uh, navigation bar. So this is sort of useless these days, guys. Hardly people use this one. Uh, I'm not sure why it's still there. So now we got this uh, navigation wheel. So you can turn it on and then it gives you sort of like a wheel along with your mouse with this one. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can do a lot of these functions. And um, if you are a fan of this one, yeah, please go ahead and use it. Uh, if not, you can get rid of that. And then you got this button here to pretty much pan, zoom and things like that. Uh, so that's one thing. And if you don't want the navigation bar, you can close it. If you're not a fan of navigation bar, you can close it. And uh, the view cube also, you can close it within the options. I'll show you that. And if you want to get the navigation bar, just in case you closed it and you want it back again, the command is N-A-V-B-A-R. And then press enter and then turn it on. And then you get the navigation bar. If you want to turn it off, N-A-V-B-A-R-O-F-F. And then you can turn it off. Okay, so that's your navigation bar. And then, um, so the main thing is in AutoCAD is the editor. So this is called a command line editor. In here, you can actually go and type in all the commands that you wanted. Uh, so press escape to come out of a command. If you want to type in a new command, let's say you want a line command, line, press enter, and then it gives you instructions. So it tells you how to draw a line. So let's say if you go to a polyline, PL, and then it lets you know how to draw the polyline. You can watch the instructions here. It will say click on the next point or you want to do an arc, halfway, half width, length, undo, whatever you want to do, it gives you the instructions. And then um, you can, you got this little uh, customize options here. So with this one, you can customize your command line. We'll do it in a separate, separate thing with a lot of tricks into the command line. And um, the command line is a very easy to use tool, guys. Nothing much. And then um, in the lower section you will see the footer you will see the um, the status bar in the status bar you see a whole bunch of tools here uh, by default some of the tools are turned on like say ortho polar and uh, dynamic ucs and a lot of these ones so dynamic input a lot of these ones so i'm going to show you in a separate chapter what are these ones and how to use them and uh, for now this is a quick little tool generally you use it within your drawing and you can turn on and off to uh, help you draw better on the drawing okay so that's all for the introduction of autocad and um, uh, subscribe to the channel i'll create a separate um, uh, exercise file link that you can download all the exercise files which i'm going to use it in this playlist and also please uh, watch the other tutorials if you want guys if i'm having a separate tutorial for developing plugins on top of autocad civil 3d uh, microsoft project and then civil 3d tutorial itself and then uh, sub-assembly composer, a lot of other components as well. Uh, just let me know if there is any specific things that you want me to go through. All right, subscribe to the channel, guys. Have a good day.